As someone who, like it or not, exists in the world of 2020, you're undoubtedly aware of the notion of a second peak of coronavirus. You may have even watched some of the UK Prime Minister's speech, where he talked about the five tests that needed to be met in order for the UK's current lockdown to come to an end. If you have, you'll notice that number five is the idea that there will not be a second peak of infections. Therefore, not only is avoiding a second peak of the virus essential to save lives and protect the NHS, but it's also essential to allow the people of Britain to return to their daily lives. That's not just in the UK either. Governments around the world are very focused on getting the virus under control and preventing a second spike of infections when lockdowns come to an end. So in this video, we're going to look at the phenomena and discuss what can be done to stop a second wave. Before we do though, if this is a topic you're interested in, we have another video up on TLDR EU that you might be into. In that video, we discuss how Germany was able to limit the spread of the virus without ever implementing a full lockdown. Now they're beginning to relax the rules, and some are concerned that they're already seeing an uptick in cases, leading some to speculate that they're experiencing a second peak. Find out more about Germany's potential second peak on TLDR EU, it's linked down below. What we discuss in this video will be true for almost all countries, but as a UK channel, we'll be primarily looking at the UK's attitude to a second wave and the fears that the government has. Throughout the government's document entitled Our Plan to Rebuild, there are constant references to the second wave and how damaging it could be. The most important of these comes when discussing the, some of the problems being faced. It's claimed that relaxing social distancing measures now would lead to a resurgence in the virus and a second wave that could be larger than the first. They explain that as the population does not yet have immunity, if lockdown is relaxed right now, the epidemic would double in size every few days if no control measures were in place. This is exactly how a second peak could arise. The idea is that while cases have been kept under control by the lockdown, when the lockdown is released, the cases will shoot back up again. It's worth remembering why cases have been slipping recently. The basic idea is that because we've all been distancing ourselves, we've had less opportunity to pass on the virus, and thus the number of people that each infected person passes the disease on to has fallen. And as it's fallen, so have the number of cases. The drop has happened because we've been further apart, so we've not been able to infect people as easily. We haven't become immune, we haven't developed a vaccine, and we haven't been able to change the fundamental nature of the virus. So when we head back to the real world, we will begin to affect more people again, and cases will naturally increase. This is unless we do one of these things. It doesn't look like we'll have a vaccine for a while, so unless we can stay fully locked down for months, even years, then this isn't the immediate solution. We can't manipulate the virus or force it to mutate, and the only other way to reach immunity is through herd immunity, where enough people get the virus and recover that the spread then slows. The problem is that not everyone who gets the virus would recover and become immune, so this isn't a popular option either. So for now, none of the criteria are met, and it seems that opening up will inevitably cause cases to rise. So if we are to reopen, it's simply a problem of managing the unlocking so that the case numbers don't overwhelm health services. The idea is that when we're unlocking, we need to stop the overwhelming spread of the virus and avoid the debilitating second peak. And when we're doing that, we need to pay attention to the infamous R number and ensure that it remains below 1. An R number of below 1 means that on average, every infected person passes the virus onto less than one other person. Therefore, the number of new infections will be on a downward trajectory instead of an upward one which is theoretically exactly what we want to happen. The problem is that actually achieving it isn't all that easy. Some people think that they have a solution, and a hybrid lockdown unlocking, where some people are allowed out under certain circumstances, may allow people to get the freedom they demand, but without allowing the virus to spread like crazy. If this were to be successful, it could be continued until a vaccine was developed, allowing us to finally return to normal. The problem is finding the balance. How much can be reopened and how much needs to remain locked down in order to keep R below 1? That's exactly what the UK government is trying to determine, as outlined in their plans on Sunday. We made a full video explaining Johnson's plans for England, and it's linked below. But the whole plan is based on slowly unlocking things when the virus's spread gets low enough to allow it. 
Luckily for the government, it seems that they have time to find this balance. Evidence has been found that people are generally supportive of the lockdown in the UK. Despite being in lockdown for nearly eight weeks, over 80% of people surveyed said that they could easily continue lockdown until June. It's only when people were asked about coping with lockdown until July that only around 50% of people said they could do so easily. Unfortunately though, things aren't all that simple. Although the public are, so far, seemingly supportive of lockdown continuing for the next few months, there are fears that a second wave will still be a problem over the coming months. In fact, The Telegraph have claimed that due to a small but important change in the wording of government advice, it's been subtly hinted that the government now believe that a second peak is inevitable. They have claimed that the wording of the fifth condition to lift the lockdown, as mentioned earlier, was originally that a second peak should be avoided. But as of the 28th of April, the government changed this wording to being a second peak that overwhelms the NHS should be avoided, a subtle indicator that some form of second peak is inevitable. Additionally, Brian McLeadon at The Express found more evidence of the government hinting their belief that the UK could undergo a second wave of the coronavirus. He found that the government said in the Our Plan to Rebuild document that the seasonal flu could be confused with coronavirus throughout the winter. The theory is that because the government mentions the potential for confusion over winter, they must expect the virus to last that long, suggesting a second peak. This is a notably weaker argument though, as it's unlikely that without a vaccine, the current pandemic will be over by winter anyway, so under any circumstances, second peak or not, there will be this issue of confusion. However, the continuation of funds to the Nightingale hospitals are seen as an indication that the government is preparing for a second peak as it's been argued that keeping them open while cases are on decline simply doesn't make much sense, unless they are indeed preparing for a second peak. Sarah Napton and Patrick Sawyer go on in this article to explain that the lockdown so far has been more effective than the government originally anticipated. And although this in theory is good, in practice it means that fewer people have been exposed to the virus so far, and therefore fewer people have had chance to build up immunity. This means that a second peak that may take place in the future, due to a relaxing of social distancing measures, could be far worse, because fewer people have been exposed to the virus, and therefore fewer people have built up immunity. The issue of immunity is something that's far from resolved anyway, as it's still not clear how long someone gains immunity from COVID-19 for after contracting it. So it's possible that after a while, the benefits of herd immunity could fade away, if people catch COVID multiple times. Irrespective of this, the rise in number of cases over winter could be particularly difficult for the NHS, who would then also be dealing with other problems that naturally arise over winter, such as the increase in number of A&E patients and the number of beds already occupied. According to the King's Fund, over winter, beds occupied in the NHS regularly exceed 90%, and at times even exceed 95%. To put this in context, although the King's Fund accepts that there's some debate over what level of bed occupancy becomes dangerous, they state that the chief executive of NHS providers, Claire Marks, claims that it should not exceed 85%, whereas a report from NHS England claims that it should not exceed 92%. Regardless of specifics though, the fact is that at times, the NHS exceeds 95% occupancy over winter clearly over the recommended amounts, no matter whose numbers you're taking. And that's without the presence of COVID-19. This clearly demonstrates existing issues in the NHS, meaning that the issue of a second peak could be particularly bad if it does occur over winter. The King's Fund mentions that the standard spike in winter is usually due to respiratory problems. If a second wave does take place in winter, as has been speculated, the NHS would not only have to deal with the normal seasonal rise in patients, but also with patients suffering with COVID-19. Therefore, a second peak of the coronavirus in winter would be incredibly difficult for the NHS to deal with. It might also be difficult for people across the country, who at this point might be getting used to relaxed lockdown restrictions. For a nation who's already been dealing with lockdown for almost eight weeks, the idea that just as lockdown is beginning to be lifted, it's instead reimposed, may be particularly difficult to deal with. Maintaining public trust and order during a crisis is of the utmost importance. The moment people stop trusting a government or feel that the government is being unreasonable is when the situation becomes difficult to manage and people may begin to flaunt the advice. So the government needs to be careful to avoid a damaging second wave. 
If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out the one we mentioned over on TLDR EU, where we talk about how Germany's dealing with unlocking the country and the potential for them having a second wave. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a video. You can also find more from us across other social networks simply by searching for TLDR News. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible.